Hello booktube, it's Ben here from the History Feather channel. Um, I've got a book haul today and I've received um, a couple of boxes of books from Pen and Sword Books. So I'm going to show you those ones today. Um, first of all, I hope you all have a, you've all had a good weekend. And hopefully you're all going to have a good week as well. Um, over, in the, over here in the UK it's currently half term for the schools in the run up to um, Halloween. So, um, but hopefully everyone who watches this video has a good week. Um, so that's, again, got some good, interesting ones. I've got, um, seven altogether. So here we go. All right, first one, um, is probably a little, a little bit of an obscure one for me, because it's not, not really history, but, um, this one's called Protecting the Presidential Candidates from JFK to Biden by Mel Ayton. Um not not kind of like a usual one for me, but um it, in theory it should be quite interesting looking at the security and the details that um go in to support the US president and probably the amount of people that must be needed for that sort of job it must be amazing but um from the back cover here we've got um there are a handful of investigative historians like author mel ayton who are the best known for their unique insights into american history what is particularly remar particularly remarkable about ayton is that he is a british soldier who is widely admired and respected as one of the top experts in the world on the protection of US presidential candidates. His latest work, Protecting the Presidential Candidates from JFK to Biden, is the third in his wonderfully researched and brilliantly written series of books about this fascinating subject. And it is Aiton's best and most important work today. And that's... Um, that comments from Dan E. Moldy, Moldy, or Mulder, author of The Hoffa Wars and the Killing of Robert F. Kennedy. So there we go, that's that book, and that's published by Pen and Sword Books. Um, it will be available online, I'll try and leave a link below this video. And that's priced at um, £25, that's UK British pounds or thirty four dollars if you're in the US. Right, the next book is the one I thought I was wasn't gonna get a copy of because I thought I'd turned it down by mistake. But I'm really looking forward to this one. This is gonna be such a good one. This is Richard Van Emden. Let me just move my fingers so you can see that. it's called Boy Soldiers of the Great War. The fully revised final edition pen and sold books and it's another one at £25 or 49 US dollars and it's a nice chunky one and I know for a start before I even start reading this, this is going to be a really good book because I've read a, a couple of Richard's other books and they're all fantastically detailed and they just so well written you kind of get um thrown into the story and you can't really put the book down once you've started reading um the the, the telegraph calls it excellent and even-handed the times calls it engaging well written and balanced the sunday times says should this should this have been allowed to happen richard van emden's fascinating and distressing account shows how difficult it is to provide a simple answer so i'm really looking forward to that and that's going to be on my tbr list very soon all right the next pen and sword book i've got is james ii and the first modern revolution it's written by john van der kist the end of absolute monarchy from the cover, which I think the cover looks quite interesting, 
I'm not sure if it really shows up along here, but um, it looks like you've got some sort of sea battle going on. But um, it certainly it certainly looks interesting. This book examines how the forces of Anglicanism, Anglicanism, and Jacobit Jacobitism collided, collided. How a monarch came to forfeit so much goodwill so quickly and through his own folly aided the effortless victory of the man and his wife, William and Mary, James's own daughter, who replaced him on the throne and at last brought a period of calm to a country that had only recently endured civil war and years of upheaval. A fresh perspective on a key period in British history. And hopefully when it comes to reading it, I'll have learnt to read again by then. Um, this looks in, this seems interesting because if it's a fresh perspective, it's not usually in the you know same rehashed story or same details and that. So it gives you like another angle to look at the book. So I'm looking forward to that one. Um, the next one is Changing Roles. Changing Roles, Women After the Great War, written by Vivian Newman. So, obviously all the books I get I look forward to, but um, I do seem to have quite a keen interest in women's history, so it'll be interesting to see how it has properly developed since the Great War, obviously at a time when women were having to go into the workplace or into the factories and um, do the, the jobs of um, the men who were sent out to the front. Um, on the back we've got factories closed, the female workforce disbanded, but some refused to hang up their overalls or their football boots. They were on collision course with a powerful misogynistic sporting body. Outraged by the state's ownership of the glorious dead, affronted by the construction of mass cemeteries, refusing to be appeased by, by platitudes, women fought to bring the boys home, even challenging royalty in their efforts. And then um, it does go on from there, but um, it's, it's really good. It's changing roles, women after the Great War. Right, another one I shall probably pronounce wrongly again. This is Eben Emel and the Defence of the Fortress Belgium, 1940, written by Clayton Donnell. Graphic account of the defence of the Belgian fortress line against the Germans in 1940 focuses on the tenacious resistance the Germans encountered when they attacked the forts of Liège and Neymar, which slowed their advance into Belgium. A deeper study of the most notorious episode in the campaign, the assault on the massive fort of Ibn Imal. So there we go, that's that one. And then the last two I've got coming up will be a bit of light reading again. I might have been sarcastic in that, but we've got this little book here. A Judge in Auschwitz, Conrad, Conrad Morgan's Crusade Against Corruption and Illegal Murder, written by Kevin Prenger. Now this is obviously about the, um, just read the inside cover. In autumn 43, SS Judge Conrad Morgan visited Auschwitz concentration camp to investigate an intercepted parcel containing gold sent from the camp. While Morgan found the SS camp guards engaged in widespread theft and corruption, 
Worse, Morgan also discovered that inmates were being killed without authority from the SS leadership. While millions of Jews were being exterminated under the Final Solution program, Conrad Morgan set about gathering evidence of these illegal murders. Morgan also visited other camps such as uh, Buchenwald, which he had the notorious camp commandant Karl Koch and the ESC, his sadistic spouse, arrested and charged. Found guilty by an SS court, Koch was sentenced to death. So yeah, another light read. Be nice and smiley whilst I'm reading that. And then it just continues. In a, <laughs> in a nice, another nice thick tome. There's a nice thick book there. We have How the World Allowed Hitler to Proceed with the Holocaust. Tragedy at Evian, written by Tony Matthews. This book is unique in that rather than de describing the historical details of the Holocaust, it examines how the Holocaust was allowed to happen, it covers a very dif different aspect of Holocaust history, I'll say that again, it covers a very different aspect of Holocaust history, one that has rarely been told. This year marks the 76th anniversary of liberation of Auschwitz, one of the most notorious of Germany's extermination camps during the war. That's how the world allowed Hitler to proceed to proceed with the Holocaust. Written by Tony Matthews and published by Pen and Sword Books. So there we go. Some I've got some nice happy reading um, to do. Um, thank you very much for watching this video. If you've enjoyed it, please give us a thumbs up. It all helps. Um, if you fancy it, um, if you've read any of these books or you're planning to, please drop us a message in the um, comments below. And other than that, thank you very much for watching. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, please do. And um, I shall be doing a couple more videos this week. So thank you very much for watching and I shall see you soon.